Fashion Royalty Dolls are a line of highly collectible fashion dolls created by Integrity Toys. In this second video in our series, we take a look at the dolls issued between 2010 and 2014. These dolls are known for their realistic high fashion looks, as well as their attention to detail and couture fashion styling. One of the things that sets fashion royalty dolls apart from other fashion dolls is their lifelike appearance. Integrity Toys was an early pioneer of diversity in the world of dolls, so these models in miniature have realistic skin tones, as well as articulated joints, which allow them to be posed in a studio-worthy manner. Their clothing and accessories are designed to be highly detailed and accurate representations of designer fashion. By 2010, the lineup of dolls had grown considerably from the initial launch of Fashion Royalty, which consisted of just two characters, Veronique Perrin, as head of the W Cosmetics company, and her best friend, the face of W Cosmetics, Adele Makita. The story of Fashion Royalty is set in the highly competitive and cutting-edge world of high-end cosmetics and marketing. As such, a whole bevy of characters was required, and integrity delivered on this. To set the scene, Here's a selection of some of the beautiful faces that appeared between 2010 and 2014. The dolls reflect a sophisticated world by means of luxurious outfits and accessories. Photography and styling are an important part of marketing the dolls, as well as the aspirational clothing, often using lavish fabrics. Regal Estate Agnes von Weiss was introduced at the 2010 Dolls in Oz event. Costumed in a black bustier dress, cream-colored jacket with a black belt, and fishnet stockings, clear blue pumps, blue stud earrings, and a black and blue necklace. Her face screening is a softer version of the festive decadence Agnes. Venus Secret Eugenia Frost. Underwear a go-go. Plenty of options here for bedroom antics, and a handy black skirt, just in case a late-night trip to the liquor store is necessary. A breath of fresh air with spring-forward Eugenia Frost. A sky-blue and buttercup yellow frothy combo. The eyeshadow is hardly understated, but it does match the skirt. Suited and booted, the handsome Darius Reed cuts a dash in staying power. Channeling Karl Lagerfeld with the sky-high collar and natty tailoring. The faux crocodile bag is a must-have item. Twenty ten 2010 brought us the Foundation Collection. Fire Within Jordan, this doll works pink and black with an outrageous net hat, and pleated puffball skirt, and diamante trim shoes. Not exactly wedding or funeral, but perfect for the weekly shop at Safeway. That's more like it, Vanessa Perrin goes full-on old-school Hollywood glam in flame blue. Fishtail? Check. Embroidered train? Check. Tightly corseted bustier? Double check, there's also a little modesty black lace bra line, and enormous diamante hoop earrings. What's not to like? Just in case you have a naked doll lurking about the place, here is Flash Star Fashion. A fully accessorized fashion pack that's suitable for any occasion, although red wine and chocolate may not be advisable. But wait! There's more. Another ready-to-wear outfit to keep the chill off your doll. The winning ensemble fashion even has a coat. Not sure if the hat offers much protection against the elements, but someone had a lot of fun choosing the colors for this getup. The foundation collection of 2010 brought us Natalia Fatal as private goddess. The gown did not win universal acclaim, some unkind folks mentioned duvet covers, and unmade beds, but the doll herself works hard to carry it off. Tricks of the trade Eugenia Frost. This doll has tricks aplenty and she'll need them to work this look. Someone has been at the dressing up box by the looks of it, in a selection of garments that are rarely seen together in one outfit.
lady in waiting Dania Zare, is waiting for what? It's unlikely to be the next bus, in this dress. Perhaps a table at the latest hot eatery. Plenty of ruffles, and asymmetry in both hemline and necklace, the little black dress is uplifted with a pair of cheeky red heels. The Dazzle Collection of 2010, was billed as a photoshoot for Vanessa Perrin's inspiration for her new W Cosmetics campaign. As the saying goes, you can polish a dress and roll it in sequins, but it's still a dress. Careless Love Dania Zare, rocks the silver version. The deceptively yours Kyori Sato gift set, follows a thawing of relations with Vanessa Perrin. Kyori had a big presence in the shoot. She wears the sequin dress, with 60s beehive combo of the collection, but she also grabbed a gown, and a checkered suit, all completed with a suite of jewelry. She was determined to be the star of the show. Sold Deep Adele Makita, in the champagne sequin mini dress, natch, and sporting dramatic afro hair. Temptation Vanessa Perrin is the pink lady of the collection. She's clearly been at the peroxide too. The mood changed for 2010's dark romance convention. Dark Swan Elise Jolie strikes a somber note in a double-breasted jacket, influenced by men's tailoring. Drama is added by the bold makeup and strikingly red hair, simply worn in a lush single braid. Scarlet woman Adele Makita wears a bold pompadour hairdo, atop a graphically delineated scarlet satin puffball dress, with black sequin trim. She's in black shoes with gold platforms, for a bit of bling. Out of the blue Curie Sato. Chocks away, in a runway ready flight attendant look, featuring Curie's favorite black and navy colorway. Provocatrice Anya, goes full on goth, fishnets, raven hair, blackest jewelry. The effect is softened a little by means of baby pink eyeshadow. Night Vision Adrian Von Lamberg, you wouldn't want to meet him in a dark alley. Or maybe you would. Black on black, except for the crisp white shirt with horizontal button detail. There's even an ascot, or cravat for British viewers, shades and slightly creepy black leather gloves. Agnes Von Weiss did rather well at this bash. Attendees of the 2010 Dark Romance Convention were delighted to receive Head for Glamour as part of their convention gift set. A gorgeous Agnes Von Weiss with platinum hair and wearing a basque, in red with black lace trim. The doll is reminiscent of dressing the part Agnes. A raven version was gifted to the folks that helped at the convention. Our glass Xenia has forgotten her dress again. What's she like? That nipped in waist don't come easy. No burgers and fries for this gal. Fine romance Eugenia Perrin gets to model a ball gown. Er, that's it. Smoke screen Dania Zare in yet more evening wear, although with a shorter skirt, and a more severe look for Dania this time. We added a smoke screen too. Did you see what we did there? Dasha is, of course, always polished. Her floral column of a gown is accented with a bright green purse, to pick out the foliage of the print. Not exactly fashion royalty, but they are here anyway. Integrity Toys take on the ultra-high fashion Sybarites, the 16-inch tall avant-garde dolls, were scaled down to 12 inches for an appearance at the Dark Romance Convention. IT did a great job with the scaling, it's hard to tell the difference in photos between these mini avant-garde and their bigger sisters. In 2011 we were off to see the wizard at the IFDC Wizard of Oz collection. A fashion set inspired by the wizard himself, go green fashion. Natalia plays Wicked in Go West, a very glam take on the Wicked Witch of the West. 
Eat your heart out Margaret Hamilton. No green makeup to be seen. High drama with the old Natalia sculpt, in which he haute couture. I'll get you my pretty, and your little dog too. Watch out Glinda. Aisha Kalpan and Arainan is full on femme, in Go North. Betcha Billy Burke would have swapped that plexiglass crown for this frothy feathered concoction. A very rad Dorothy, in Go Home, modeled by Reina Amati. The signature blue gingham is there, but not much else. The ruby slippers have become kinky boots, and Toto is nowhere in sight. Somewhere over the rainbow, indeed. Yum. More men. The new close-ups boys from the 2011 line. Fast track Victor James, sports office worker sheet. In his glasses he's an intellectual, in his shirt he's just hot. There's definitely a Clark Kent and Superman thing going on here. Silent partner Roman Perrin, has a great Gatsby vibe. What is it with the sewn in trouser creases, and the flat cap? Of the three, this one is more of a miss to yours truly. <music> Leading man Lucas Maverick. That's more like it. Rumpled hair and more of an outdoorsy look. Ready for adventure? Back to the girls, in 2011's FR2 range. Modern sensibility Dasha. Modern? Maybe. But hardly sensible. Perhaps she got dressed in the dark. There's probably an occasion that this outfit would be ideal for. We just can't think of it. Grand gesture Dominique Makita, in a perfectly acceptable mermaid gown, or it would have been if the added ruffles and Christmas tree ornament had not been added. What's going on here guys? Impossibly beautiful. Dominique Makita appears again in a different guise, but in another over-embellished gown. Was all that envelope flap detail at the neckline really necessary? Minimalist Dasha in simple daywear, understated makeup, and a bag. The blouse could have been a little more tailored and form-fitting. But it's easy to gripe, you may say. Have you ever tried creating garments at this scale yourself? If you need a pink halterneck jumpsuit and a big black bag for your doll, here it is, metropolitan fashion. Sheer bliss fashion, could be perfect for looking mysterious at a sidewalk cafe in Paris. Just don't walk into the door in those very dark shades. You'll ruin the effect. Engaging Elise Jolie. Where to start? Let's put together a sleeveless jacket style black mini dress, and top it with a giant red pleated ribbon hat. Surely someone will wear it. Well, Elise Jolie drew the short straw. Nice makeup though. Dominique Makita appears again, this time in rare appeal. The title says it all. Beating, side peplum effect, so flattering for the hips, in a fuchsia and purple combo with candy cane effect peep toe booties. Elise Jolie has more luck with flawless. An elegantly styled black dress with a flat cowl neckline, not sure about the color choices for the accessories, but that's just being picky. Look what's in the lottery, Renegade Dasha. A fringed and pleated confection of deliciousness. It's bold, but it works.
If you like a neutral palette, only natural fashion might be right up your street. All these separates would be great to use as the basis for other outfits. And so on to 2011's Fashion Royalty Collection. Porcelain Beauty. We can never quite get beyond Xenia's original Bride of Dracula incarnation. It's hard not to see those fangs. But this is a very elegant rich lady look she's rocking. Grey chiffon blouse, sharply tailored pants, and a cool trench coat. Shades for anonymity and a pop of color in the electric blue footwear. Nice. Veronique is back as a pin-up girl, modern comeback Veronique Perrin, noir or blonde, depending on your tastes. Hey, she's in the lottery, why not try to win them both? Another sheer blouse and coat number. Aisha Kalpan and Arainan truly is a scene stealer in this ensemble. They got the understated Lux look pinned down, for this collection. Whatever Vanessa Perrin is pursuing in current pursuits, will be much easier in those short shorts. Catch her if you can. Follow the line Xenia is Tuxalicious. The line is good, in this ultra slim tailoring with a daring plunge neckline. Thank heavens for toupee tape. She has an alternative pussy bow blouse if the occasion is more demure. Dress code Vanessa Perrin. The dress code is what exactly? No jeans? Who did your hair be? Ah. We're back with this collection strengths, outerwear and separates. Breaking the mold Veronique Perrin, shows off another well-executed trench coat, over a delicately embroidered sleeveless chiffon tank top, worn with a simple wrap skirt. Highbrow Adele Makita, more chiffon and another pussy bow, teamed with pleated pants, worn with aplomb. Easy elegance Corin, in shorts and chiffon. Anyone else spotting a theme here? The highly tailored double-breasted blazer elevates the look, and the pale grey shades are the perfect finishing touch. Pencil me and Eugenia Perrin Frost. Anna Winter anyone? Just the right amount of severe. This doll was not wildly popular on release, but she turned out to be one of the most versatile of the line. There's nothing that doesn't suit her, her neutral makeup and classic bob serve her well. Let's fly off to the 2011 Jet Set Convention. The FR2 line gets it together. Most wanted Elise Jolie as an exercise in understated refinement. Just the right degree of embellishment, in a door-challenging ball gown. Exceptional Tatyana Alexandrova wears a pretty, sunflower yellow summer dress, with a sprinkling of abstract black embroidery, all topped off with a straw picture hat. Quite the busy queen bee of the garden party.
ever more Vanessa Perrin, in the strong silhouette of a red fishtail gown, with black net overlay. Need shoes? We got them. The FR2 shoe pack. Armadillo for you. Brightness calls. It certainly does, this is a high contrast blue and green ensemble for Aisha Kalpan and Orinon. Another puffball, cuffed at the hemline this time, with a 60s inspired bodice. At Von Sawyer's convention workshop, there were four versions of corn to play with, blonde, auburn, brunette and raven, all wearing Versace-influenced halter top dresses, in a variety of colors. Backstage Ambition is another of the Dracula dolls repurposed. This time it's the Elias Viega sculpt, but it's hard not to see beyond the fangs. In an unlikely pairing, the sweetly pretty city girl Imogen completes the duo. Time for lingerie. In pristine white bra and panties is day, as posed by Dania Zare. Her counterpoint is night, modeled by old-style Natalia Fatal, looking sultry, scantily clad in black undies, and a cascade of contrast platinum blonde hair. Air apparent Veronique Perrin goes Ivana Trump, with a sky-high updo. Monochrome magic in a lavishly gathered gown, with rise and fall puffball hemline, and a demure fitted white, high-collar top, with generous beading. The contrasting red ribbon belt is a perfect match for her lipstick. Eugenia Frost gets a gift set, point of departure, the ideal capsule wardrobe for any destination. With plenty of mix and match opportunities and a generous supply of shoes. Business class Anya has had an upgrade, there's perhaps a tad too much lime green, but nobody will notice once the cabin lights are dimmed for takeoff. At the Jet Set convention of 2011, Mistress of Mayhem Curie Sato was the table centerpiece doll, appearing as no reservations. Very glamorous in late 50s to early 60s styling. Style Council Adele Makita and Veronique Perrin, a highly anticipated gift set at the convention. The duo are the original FR dolls from the line's inception. Adele, however, is on her third sculpt, and looks quite different from the previous two iterations. Other than that, not much to report. Vivid Impact Agnes Von Weiss, the red hair, combined with a purple gown, certainly makes an impact. But perhaps not in a good way. Who did her hair? Are they still working? Did we just see this gown on Agnes? Oh wait, this one is in a different fabric. Forever Veronique in a sly swirl with a curl updo. Regal Solstice Anya wears one of the most desirable fashion royalty gowns ever. A daring sheer chartreuse fabric with lavish pink and lilac floral embroidery, over a striking black petticoat, all accessorized with black, aside from a dash of pink at the feet. Exquisite. This was the last outing for the original Curie face sculpt. After Rising Sun, a new face sculpt for the doll was to be introduced. A simple short pants suit, with cropped bolero jacket, and eye-catching blue and orange accessories. The well-known entrepreneur, author, and doyen of the W Club, Carol Roth, is celebrated in doll form, along with a little promotion for her book. A stunning fashion, in collaboration with the esteemed dressmaker details, this beautiful retro-inspired gown and accessories was a W Club exclusive. The drama is in the detail, a starring night has become highly sought after.
Monaco Royale, two disparate ideas in search of a gown. The top half looks fab, the draped bottom half is groovy. Put them together and what have you got? A nice cocktail glass. Not exactly fashion royalty, but when Victoire Rue was launched, she didn't have a permanent home. Emerging victorious from the Second World War, Victoire Rue, armed with a killer wardrobe, is on a mission to make the world rediscover Parisian haute couture. The doll's first appearance was during the 2011 convention in Chicago, the Jet Set Convention. Fauber Saint Honore was the first Victoire Rue doll, wearing a pencil silhouette dress, a yellow bullfighter jacket, a cap with a veil, and a faux mink stole. A standalone outfit, Avenue Montaigne, was also part of the collection. Let's have a fashion night out. Who could resist a little shopping at Bergdorf Goodman? The 2011 FR2 Lottery Doll in Luxe Daywear, complete with a signature carrier bag and a huge white handbag, perhaps with a bit of Hermes influence? I'm just saying. For 2012, Vanessa Perrin has been at the dressing up box again. But this time she pulls it off. Outsass is an exercise in vintage styling, with perhaps a few well-chosen thrift store items blended with designer goodies. A wild 40s ensemble using a daring palette of colors. Long cool woman Xenia serves rock chick eleganza. What might have been a demure gown features a thigh-high split, and tightly cinched with a heavy-duty black leather belt, a ball and chain necklace, with coordinating earrings, complete the look. Still can't unsee the fangs though. Corrine is Miss Metallic in Shake It Up. Another rock-flavored outfit, in silver-gray. The intricately constructed bodice gives a big reveal. The silver and black enamel jewelry is retro-modern, and those peep-toe booties are a personal favorite, totally postmodern. love the surprising red tipped heel detail. We're still in John Varvato's territory with Rock Me Baby. Reina, in oh so tight pants, a lace up sheer blouse, a black bandana, and a purple sequin jacket that could have been pinched from Rod Stewart's trailer. Natalia's 2.0 face sculpt is back and ready to dare. Thank goodness all that cosmetic work didn't go to waste. The 2012 style directive doll is pretty in pink, with a little contrast green. Natalia is looking deceptively demure, don't be fooled by appearances. The official 2012 W Club Online event exclusive was the truly madly deeply, Baroness Agnes von Weiss mini gift set. In this incarnation Agnes resembles a cross between festive decadence and optic verve, with a little sprinkling of royal von Weiss. The chartreuse two-piece evening gown is reminiscent of Jean Marshall's ransom in red outfit. The look is late 40s and early 50s, Agnes might be channeling Lauren Bacall. The additional suit, in coral, can be worn with the chartreuse top from the other outfit. There's even a matching coral ring. The 
The style directive Veronique Dahl is sweet smell of success. Well, there's no fragrance available on this channel, but the black doily effect, over pink, seems like a successful look. No matter what it smells like. Subtle pink accents and the somewhat heavy jewelry, pull it all together. Adele is here in one of her many face sculpts, giving us some main attitude. A somewhat pouty Ms. Makita, in a slightly fussy ruffled suit with an unnecessary fur stole. Not entirely convinced by the pink print platform mini boots and bag. World on a string Eugenia, found some clothes at the back of her wardrobe and she's running with them. It takes a great stylist to pull together a look like this. Just saying. Miss Dracula is back. Senya goes elegantly up market. Not meat market, but possibly fruit and veg. It looks like there is a plausibly good dress underneath that black and applique overlay. It would have been great if the bulk of the jacket could have been pared down. Nice purse and heels though. Elegant summer style from Jordan. She did right to trust her instincts. That shade of green can be hard to carry off, but Jordan does it with ease. Cute peplum, and the pale pink contrast works well. Vanilla, pistachio, and strawberry. For those with an ice cream train of thought. Now I'm hungry after all this talking. Perry Marino's treachery and deception were a match to his wife, Natalia Fatal. He soon traded her in for a younger model. Natalia, naturally, was furious, and took her revenge by paying his stylist to dress him in this getup. Absolutely strings attached. It's peplums everywhere you look. Always on her mind Dania Zaire is a match for Jordan and her take on this style. Pink and black is always a winner, just ask Barbie. Twenty twelve introduced Curie's new face with and another thing. The inspiration for the style directive collection was fashions of the nineteen forties to fifties, with a modern twist, according to the designer, Von Sawyers. The new sculpt was a hit with collectors, as this doll sold out immediately. The doll was presented as a gift set, featuring several looks, including a belted mermaid evening gown, with plunge neckline and a draped skirt, a two piece suit with removable fur collar, and a saucy lingerie set. Accessories included a Bottega Veneta-inspired leather bag, gladiator shoes, and chunky jewelry. We meet Elise Jolie on the beach, looking cool in polka dots plus a lavish train. The perfect outfit for a stroll along the shoreline, and paddling in the ocean. Thank goodness we're not responsible for clearing up all the sand in her hotel room. High Point Vanessa Perrin in another ideal seaside ensemble. This black and red gown, with graphic panels, is just the thing for sunbathing, beach volleyball, or even fishing for tuna. Who writes this stuff? Did they even look at the pictures?
For the Tropicalia convention, Natalia decided to wear a shapeless jacket, over an unflattering skirt and top combo. Looks like the blowout was overlooked too, going instead for a crinkly hairdo. Sweet victory? I don't think so. The stylist was sacked immediately after the photos were published. Fury appeared beach ready at the 2012 convention, in peak season. This was the second outing for the new sculpt introduced earlier that year. She's channeling a Parisian lady, on vacay in Saint Tropez, as opposed to the tropics. Adele really was the main event, in a play on words with mane of hair. Get it? Her one-shouldered dress is a perfect fit with pale aqua, pink, and grey panels, carefully chosen to complement her dark golden hair. A modern-day mermaid, there's even an upfront fishtail motif included. Veronique is haute société, in a beige house coat with a beaded belt. Once she ditches the coat, the outfit comes to life. A pastel palette of pleated chiffon to create a floaty summer dress. Nice bag and accessories too. Did she give the coat to Natalia, to cover up that hideous jacket? Now that's more like it. A glorious sunset of a gown, that has inspiration from the wonderful Calixte outfit, modeled by a wire mannequin in the Theatre de la Mode collection, on show at the Mary Hill Museum in Goldendale, Washington State. If that wasn't enough, there's something of the fairy tale princess about the line of this gown. Anya has packed the perfect vacation dress in Rapture. Hopefully Diane von Furstenberg isn't watching. This bold color combo is not for the faint-hearted. Hope that's not quicksand, our model is almost ankle deep. Dasha strikes a defiant pose as infallible. This deceptively simple dress belies its intricate construction of folds and pleats. Resplendent in Eve Klein inspired blue, the accessories pop with contrasting orange and jade. At the Tropicalia Fashion Paradise, we met the newly suntanned Agnes, as a true force of nature, wearing a flowing turquoise dress, with ocean ripple effect. Her coordinating accessories are in tan, turquoise, and gold. This doll was a centerpiece and was raffled to the attendees, one per table of ten. Yowza! That's what I'm talking about. Francisco Leon is tribal tattoo, the workshop doll, in skimpy running shorts, and a barely there, string tank top. Who needs clothes when you have tattoos? Anya is back for the makeup workshop. Freshly scrubbed, save for a flick of eyeliner. All ready for you to powder and paint. And here's Veronique, waiting for her own makeover at the Uriah workshop. The beautiful, and rarely seen, Ayumi Nakamura, appears at IDEX for the W Club, in an understated peach and black colorway. With her dark eyes, a nude lip, and just a hint of blush, this doll has the elegance to carry off an uncompromising silhouette with panache. And those eyebrows are a fashion statement in themselves. And she's back again, looking utterly different in the 40s inspired opium as quite the diva in dramatic black and red. The body fitting gown is suitably slinky, and the red jacket gets Ayumi home without catching a chill.
Strict indeed. Lucia Z has a dominant S and M vibe. No, no, please don't do that to me mistress. Oh alright then. Strict elegance is softened with an off-white angora wrap coat. But you still wouldn't mess with her. The next FR2 doll is Tatyana Alexandrova, featuring more of the collection's favorite, Scarlet. This time with just a hint of black in the stockings. A cheeky peekaboo neckline made chaste by virtue of some golden lace, the swirls and pleats of fabric create a delicious confection of a dress. The Jason Wu event, for the W Club, gave us Place Vendôme, a long strapless dress in brown lace, decorated with roses, teamed with long pink gloves, lace shoes and a pearl necklace and earrings. This gown takes its inspiration from Dior of the 1950s, when Yves Saint Laurent was designing for the house. By contrast, and in more casual mode, a suntan victoire made an appearance as Saint-Tropez, in a vintage-style swimsuit and beach camisole in purple tones. The contrasting silver high heels were clearly designed especially for the beach. In 2013 it was new fantasy time. Bloodline's Tatyana Alexandrova has a Morticia moment, albeit in white, as opposed to black. A modern temptress in a gown with intricate fringing and a serpent necklace, her raven hair is streaked with silver. Not a doll to trifle with. Glam Vamp Anya has more of a saucy vibe, in her thigh-high split gown, with low plunge, over fishnet tights. The come-hither look is offset by a little smirk. She looks like she'd rather have fun than do you in, but maybe not turn your back on her. Just in case. Imogen goes full on goth, as Dark Fable. Sumptuous tailoring in the spirit of Alexander McQueen. This doll looks expensive. Dasha is purity itself. She may be serving a little sour face, but the dress is a sculptural triumph. Roland Murray meets the Sydney Opera House. The fabric is beautifully chosen, the texture shines through without impeding the lines of the tailoring. Just the right amount of color in the accessories, although the shoes might be a little on the heavy side. I know, picky picky. The Ice Queen is back, Eugenia Perrin Frost is a touch of frost. She's taken Peach as a theme and has run with it. A cocktail party ready frock, brocaded and ruffled, in a single color from head to toe, including the lipstick. Yuri Sato has loved the one, the fashion royalty upgrade doll for 2013.
Black. Pink. Capelet. Bibbity bobbity hat with veil. Yep. There you go. Corrine gets polished in a strong 1950s silhouette. More pink and black, but this time it's a coral pink. The blouse and skirt combo is uplifted with luxe fabrics and plenty of tucks and gathers. Simple, yet effective. Dania's air is irresistible, not to mention a little scary. She takes power dressing to a new level in this faux leather jacket with a portrait neckline, and a wide red cummerbund style belt. Even Veronica Lake would have been envious of the highly controlled peekaboo platinum waves. Some contrast is provided by the cream accessories and the look is softened a little with the sculpted rose necklace. Senior returns, appropriately enough in blood red. Ambitious features an intricately tailored dress under a generously proportioned black coat, with abbreviated sleeves and a cinched waist. Once more, cream accents are used for the accessories. Captivating Anya is the bell of the ball in this ice blue ankle length gown, with a great big bow. Accessorized in black with a whole Tiffany's window full of jewels, that necklace has got to be heavy. Pinstripes three-quarter sleeves and another retro look for Dania Zare and Nostalgia. A little sparkle is added with the beaded collar, to prevent the look from becoming too somber. Ankle strap shoes, a bright red purse, and a fur wrap complete this ladies who lunch look. Jordan truly is splendid, carrying through more of the themes from this cohesive fashion royalty collection. The sculpted rose necklace reappears in another colorway, clever crisscross tailoring is here. Accessories are a surprising olive green, perhaps in anticipation of a martini? And there's another big ol' fur. At the premiere collection, Anya debuts a nearly nude combo of satin and sequins. It works but not hugely exciting. Who's your friend? Adele gets a semi-peplum in shocking pink, with skinny pants, as paparazzi darling. A pared-down outfit that feels it needs something more to elevate it. As ever, Eugenia Perrin Frost is bittersweet. It's a dress in bottle green satin with draped waistline and a side sash. And asymmetric shoes. Red hair always looks great with this shade of green. Not sure about the pink lips though. Breathless Veronique Perrin is coolly elegant in pristine white. A futuristic vibe, 
this suit could have walked straight off the set of a sci-fi movie. Pared down again, but not in a something's missing kind of way. Love the surprise of the daring backless jacket, and you can never go wrong with a black net fascinator. For a complete change of mood, Veronique is indeed bewitching, in this grand occasion ball gown, with a net over nude bodice, and chiffon overlaid skirt. The narrowest of narrow belts pulls in her waist, only the simplest diamond jewelry is needed. Not seen when worn, but the pop of red in the black patent high heels, is a witty splash of color. A little bit Ursula Andress, Natalia brings the Grecian goddess vibe bang up to date, in brazen beauty. Eugenia Perrin Frost has more success with evening wear and after tonight. She is full-on old-school Hollywood glamour from top to toe. The platinum hair, the 40s-style Dior makeup, and a gown that even Grace Kelly would have been happy to wear. The hot pink strappy heels bring everything right up to date. The 2013 premiere convention in LA introduced us to another tan Agnes Von Weiss, Nightfall, ready for cocktails in basic black with contrast red heels, lacy black tights, and a pair of extravagant drop earrings. This Agnes was a convention souvenir doll, which she doesn't look happy about, but then she never looks happy about anything. Bellissima indeed, Rita Hayworth meets Jessica Rabbit. The only redhead Natalia thus far. What a doll. Black Orchid Vanessa Perrin. A dress in search of a concept. Is it kinky Bavarian housefrau meets vamped up lingerie? It's hard to think of a suitable occasion to wear this number. Meeting the partners of your law firm? I think not. Munich basement whip cracking party? Perhaps. For the 2013 premiere convention, Curie went back to her Asian roots, appearing in an elegant Chang Song, worn with just the right degree of attitude and complemented by elegant shoes and jewelry. Elise Jolie is in need of a restyle and a blowout. Fortunately, she's in the right place, as the W Cosmetics hairstyling workshop doll. She scrubs up well, Elise reappears as Midnight Star in a gown based on a Jason Wu original. Straight off the runway, and the 2013 official convention doll. Also presented at this convention was the event-only Agnes Doll, October issue. An uncompromising look with crocodile pumps, a diamond ring, and dark shades. Very Parisian, she might have stepped straight from a Helmut Newton shoe.
Blink and its 2014. Let's take a look at fashion royalties offerings for that year. Elise Jolie remains the high fashion mannequin of choice for the line. This collaboration with Montaigne Market, features lashings of gilded sequins on a halterneck knee-length dress, worn with silver strappy heels. And for shopping, there's an oversized boxy safari-style bomber jacket, a generously proportioned buff purse, and of course, a duo of branded carrier bags. What a lovely gift set. Mademoiselle Jolie, in a platinum beehive is an exercise in beige and black, as ombre poétique. Billed as the mother of Elise, the face sculpt is Aisha in a Caucasian skin tone. The fitted tulle evening gown is complete with a matching embroidered clutch purse, shoes and jewelry. There is also a black lingerie set. The dress is reminiscent of Pale Fire Vanessa. And the 2014 W Club Design Award goes to, Vanessa Perrin. Edge was designed by Lisa Ramsamy. Her competition winning design was personally selected by Jason Wu, and the Integrity Toys design team. The ultramodern creation is complemented with earrings, a bracelet, bag and shoes. She looks like an update on the very desirable posy sand cooler of Vanessa. A worthy winner and a stunner. Dania Zaira's rare appearance was the final W Club doll of 2014. She has a cool understated elegance, and perhaps something of Jackie Onassis about her. The soft winter white cocktail dress features a built-in top-knot detail. There's a faux snakeskin bag, matching short boots, a pair of earrings and a bracelet. For the Urban Safari collection, the core fashion royalty dolls all appeared in a series of outfits that had many mix and match possibilities, with plenty of great accessories. Elusive creature Natalia Fatel pulls the look together and tops it off with a great big hat. The high-heeled boots are ideal for hiking through the woodlands of the savannas. Elise Jolie moves away from the muted shades of the rest of the collection and on the rise, a dramatic golden yellow gown that hits all the spots. Daring plunge neckline, thigh-high split, draped waistline. She's gala ready and adds bling with gold-toned accessories. Eugenia Perrin Frost prowls the city, in a leopard print chiffon blouse, worn under a black faux leather corset. And that's not a sentence you will read very often. Never understated, this look is one for the brave. Fashion explorer Vanessa Perrin was perhaps the most basic of the urban safari collection but worth having for collectors, if only for the possibility of mixing separates and accessories with the other dolls. Fury Sato was faded desert. The highly detailed outfit consisted of a vest with flat patch pockets, with box pleats and lapels, cinched with a faux leather belt, over a straight skirt with crisscross detail, in a patterned fabric, and a nude colored sleeveless top underneath.
Veronique Perrin provided the other splash of color in this collection, this time in red, in a chic, form-fitting day dress with a slim leather belt. She looks beautiful with this face up and short hair. Vivid Encounter Adele Makita wears an olive green gown, accessorized with a fresh new necklace and bracelet, plus a gold clutch bag. The bodice is nicely done, but the draping on the skirt, not so much, it's left kinda hanging. Good hair and makeup though. The high visibility Agnes mini gift set was the event doll for this collection. For the first time her lips were not painted in her usual scowl but in a softer line, that does not exactly follow the sculpt. The Baroness's look is composed of a two-piece jacket ensemble, with laced-up eyelid details, and a faux suede sleeveless biker-inspired top. Agnes also sports a fashionably tall straw hat, sunglasses and an oversized purse. The outfit completely transforms by changing into a long mermaid skirt, revealing a bustier top. Two pairs of shoes, jewelry, and a doll stand are also included. At the gloss convention, anticipation ran high. Nocturnal Glow Veronique Perrin had great presence with warm makeup, in neutral tones, and rich lady hair. Not sure what was going on with the dress though. Maybe everything? Busy fabric, busy styling. In short, busy busy, busy. A suitably high gloss curie for the gloss convention. Nightshade exudes old-time Hollywood glamour, with a hint of danger, this doll is truly a femme fatale for the modern age. A beautiful Natalia, grandiose, appearing with her natural coloring, at the gloss convention. Back to the 70s in a Halston-inspired cape and dress. Minimal line, high elegance. Adorned Vanessa Perrin dons a movie star look, in another dress and cape combination, this time with more intricate detail and a bit of Bianca Jagger, by way of Studio 54 inspo. Cold shoulder Eugenia Perrin Frost, a draped column of one-shouldered icy blue, could have come straight from the YSL archives. Haughty hauteur on a stick. More Yves Saint Laurent with a twist. Next up is Adele Makita, in La Smoking. A pure white interpretation of the YSL classic. Bianca is back again. The gift doll of the convention. Sheer sensuality Vanessa Perrin, using her original sculpt and continuing the 1970s theme of the convention. Vanessa was the centerpiece doll for the welcome dinner. Elise Jolie continues in her role as the muse of Jason Wu. Intrigue is a tux cum jumpsuit complete with satin lapels, and based on one of the designer's real-life outfits. A great outing for this doll. Agnes was the convention souvenir doll, intimate reveal, at the 2014 Gloss Convention. Once again, the gown was based on a real-life Jason Wu original. Lingerie meets mermaid gown and has a baby. The Friday night party giveaway at the Gloss Convention was illustrious, a scarlet dress with rise and fall hemline and layers of chiffon, that follow the 1970s high-end disco theme. And finally, Integrity Toys Basic Edition dolls. Not strictly fashion royalty as such, but taking the concept of using older head sculpts on newer bodies. These dolls were available only to W Club members via a lottery, and wore simple dresses complete with matching shoes, and a doll stand.
Adele 2.0 in the Latino skin tone with strawberry blonde hair. She wears a black and gold metallic dress with super wide black belt and shoes. Aisha Kalpan Narayanan is the Aisha Lucia 1.0 sculpt with a porcelain skin tone and bright red hair. She is in a fitted black dress with copper accents and coordinating shoes. Light Strike Natalia has the 1.5 facial sculpt, and is wearing a white micro pleated dress with black side accent panels, so slimming, with a skinny black belt and shoes. Vanessa uses the original sculpt and appears in the A-tone skin tone, with deep brunette hair. Her dress is a black satin brocade, styled with a narrow red belt and matching shoes. Curie was produced in the FR Black AA skin tone, using the original sculpt, and dressed in a jacquard belted cocktail dress, with matching shoes, and contrasting yellow micro belt. And so, that's it. We'll finish with a look at some of my favorite faces from the 2010-2014 dolls. See you next time.